companies globally. So um, I would like to, to open this panel with a question to you, Dr. Shobi. Um, UPL participated first in 2018 in, in the CSA, and you managed to almost double its score in the just two years of, of participation from the first score as a participated company to today. Um, this is a great achievement and got you recognition as a yearbook member for the first time this year, meaning your company is, is now measured in sustainability performance in the top 15% of assessed companies globally. And my question to you is, um, and maybe for the companies that are new to this process or starters, how did you manage to do that? How did you improve your performance in just two years um, so much? So thank you, Robert. Thank you for inviting me for this talk. So uh, I do know that uh, uh, last three years, if you see uh, UPL a score in CSA, is uh, three times uh, more. And if you see on the percentile score, then it was 16 times uh, jump uh, in last three years. And um, uh, if you go on the questions, uh, which uh, we found uh, in CSA, very useful. And um, I think it helped a lot to improve uh, year over year. And we found that nearly 104 questions which we used to answer in CSA for the DJSI. Uh, this year, we able to uh, score 40% question, 100%. So uh, uh, that kind of achievement of UPL is, uh, because UPL is committed for uh, sustainability. And uh, we have uh, embedded uh, throughout our business sustainability. And uh, uh, coming to your question, that uh, how we have uh, uh, did it, uh, how these uh, score enhancement came in last three years. So uh, I, I would like to be very simple because I think various companies who uh, used to hear, so for them it should be easy. And uh, to make it simple, I can say that first uh, a strategy we adopted that uh, uh, we have embedded sustainability from top to bottom. So we have uh, uh, all the target and uh, goals in place and uh, communicated from top to bottom. So that was the first approach we adopted. And then we have embedded triple bottom line in our sustainability approach. Triple bottom line means uh, as uh, if we see the questionnaire of CSA, then uh, it is uh, economic dimensions, uh, environmental dimensions, and social dimensions. So we have adopted a, a structured approach towards sustainability, and we embedded all those triple bottom line in our sustainability approach and a strategy. So that was the first things where. Uh, uh, DJ SI questionnaire, the questions which came from CSA, that helped us a lot. And uh, by that way, we able to embed triple bottom approach in our sustainability approach. Uh, after that, the second thing what we did, we either remodified or brought new sustainability policies, various policies like uh, climate change policy, sustainable procurement policy, and also tax policy, uh, uh, water policy, energy policy. So those all policy we have redefined and uh, revisited and uh, brought into the not only public domain, but uh, we have implemented inside our organization. The third thing uh, is uh, on materiality assessment. Actually, uh, we conducted our materiality assessment uh, with the help of KPMG. And um, uh, I think three years back, when we came out with the material issue of UPL, then we focused. And in last three years, we focused on the material issues. And year over year, we uh, used to communicate in the public domain through our sustainability report that what we are doing and that help us a lot and uh, there we uh, score higher and higher 
um, in the uh, CSA participation. Other important thing was the sustainability reporting that uh, we have brought in practice since 2016. Uh, every year as per the GRI guidelines and with the third party uh, uh, auditing and authentication, uh, we came out with the sustainability report and uh, that also uh, helped us a lot to uh, put our work and uh, our uh, po policy in the public domain. So, uh, and uh, then the other important things we did, uh, we have taken certification of uh, responsible care and FTAC for good. And uh, when we take those certification, then a lot of auditing happens and a lot of improvement in sustainability comes. Then on uh, goals and target, we were very clear and we set very goal uh, and target. First, we set sustainability target for 2020. Now we have achieved more or less all the target. Then again, we have set target for 2025. So our target and goals related to sustainability uh, are very clear and we used to communicate uh, year over year that where we are and where we are going. So that helped us a lot uh, to come at this uh, stage. Then uh, other drive, important drive uh, we started reducing environment footprint inside our operation. And uh, that uh, provided us opportunity uh, for not only to reduce the environment footprint, but also it provided opportunity to enhance the profitability of production. And uh, in the last uh, uh, four or five years, uh, last four years from 2016 to 2020, if you see our result, then uh, we reduce uh, carbon emission 26% inside our operation. Uh, water, uh, we reduce 21% and the waste generation, we reduce 45%. So, and, and if you translate in monetary value, then it translates nearly 45 million US dollar worth saving of water bill, energy bill, and waste bill. So I think that also uh, helped us a lot to uh, score more and more in DJSI. And then uh, we are also working uh, with uh, UN Global Compact, so we are member of uh, UN Global Compact. Also, we are member of WBCST, uh, World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And there also we are actively working for the uh, achievement of uh, our uh, sustainability goal. And uh, also a lot of work and a lot of project we are participating. So I think these uh, all are the things uh, a step by a step which we did. Thank you. Thank you. Just, Just as a, as a as quick, quick follow-up follow question, question before I get to Sandy, uh, we want to keep it a bit like a conversation. Um, you, you listed good um, benefits, benefits that you achieved, but um, can you maybe provide some more examples on how, how this is they really help you in internal processes and, and externally? as an additional benefit in this process. And, and just one example each to, to keep the time. Sure, uh, thanks so much, Robert, and keep it very short. And, and, uh, no, uh, sorry, Sandeep, this was still for Dr. Shobi. I, I will have a, that was a follow-up um, for him, and then, then I will get to you, just one second. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Shobi, can you... Um, just an example of how the CSA helped internally, externally. You're on mute still, excuse me. Okay. Uh, yes, now. Now, now I'm unmuted? Yes. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, so uh, uh, can you tell your question again? The question was, you have spoken about the process and the benefits um, and, and just one follow-up questions on how did it, the CSA help you internally, the CSA process internally, and maybe the external recognition, how did that help you? If you could provide just two quick examples. 
so i think the one example is as i have narrated to you we able to reduce our environment footprint of our operation and we reduce 26% carbon emission we reduce 21% water we reduce 45% waste and if you translate into the value then it is coming nearly 45 million us dollar saving of water energy and waste so that was the one a part of this uh, it also increases our productivity uh, also uh, improved our brand image uh, also attracted uh, talent uh, and uh, also investors uh, so when our uh, score goes on then the investors also get attracted talent also get attracted so that was also one of the benefit we got and uh, then also uh, other thing is uh, we um, enhanced uh, our profitability and also innovation uh, because of embedding sustainability and reduce environment footprint we came out with various innovative technology so today if you see the upl uh, we are the first in the world to implement uh, forward osmosis for the waste water treatment uh, we we have implemented a scale band technology where a lot of water saving happens in the cooling tower we have implemented volute technology for the good dewatering of the sludge so i think uh, in summary we can say that uh, corporate image and public perception are the real economic force and company must have to deal and manage and uh, embedding sustainability into business that i feel is best way to manage good corporate image as well as the public perception and uh, i can say that the djsi uh, and the csa uh, they are helping uh, companies to manage the uh, corporate image as well as the brand image public perception so uh, these all are the benefit uh, for the, those company who are participating and they are scoring higher and higher score in the uh, csa thanks a lot thanks a lot sandeep now i get to you <laughs> so we 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 heard from from dr shobhi who is with upl participating for a couple of years now and is making great improvements tech mahindra is in a leading position in the csa for many years in your industry um how are you still creating value and benefits from csa participation after after so many years i know you invest a lot of time um every year and you are rewarded with good positions for that time but what are the what are the benefits that that you really make you keep you going after so many years yeah uh, thanks so much robert and thanks for missing you uh, here in india and uh, thanks uh, then we thank shiva um, shivananda and thanks uh, 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 thanks the team uh, so uh, i think so the point here uh, robert is that every time you know uh, the the time that we really start the whole process and till the time we really submit the submit the questionnaires and then uh, the results come in and you know last time i also you know said the same thing was that I mean, there's an excitement within the organization saying that you know how have we performed okay so you know we wait uh, you know the results normally come out about 3 am or about 4 am in the morning so whole team waits that you know when the results come in and and we look at how 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 have we scored so you know there is a there will be messages across at 4 am in the morning saying that oh we made it again so you know so these are the kind of things one is that keeps us all motivated other is uh, if i if i really look at how it is making a difference even at this point of time so as soon as the results come in they get dissipated into the various functions saying that uh, uh, sirs and madams this is this is this is how you have fared in your in your function okay. and then there is the what we look for is an improvement plan where is it that you missed out where is it that you could improve better where are the policies that you are missing out everything is well charted as a program management and brought into a structure saying that yes these are the improvements we'll make this year and this is what we will see right from governance economic to customers to to look at the aspects of 
you know, the employee engagement, where are, where are we missing from? So it becomes a full-fledged process in itself looking at the, the, the you know, how do we really do? So that really helps overall. Other aspect is that uh, from, from, from us, it becomes also a brand uh, where I'm looking today that uh, how I, I reach out to my employees and the future employees saying that, you know, this is an organization which is sustainable. This is an organization where you would love. This is an organization where people, people are cared. So, you know, that becomes another, another very important aspect of me where I'm really getting a lot of help from, from, from uh, CSA and, and uh, SNP. So uh, then going back into my employee engagement, you know, whether I'm saying green marshals or, you know, when they do their work, they look at how, how is it that their work is getting recognized and how are they making an impact. Net net, if I say, is that right from the grassroots level till the time the till the time we get the scores, make the improvements, it adds a lot of value to us as an organization. And I think so. Credit goes to everyone at the CSC. Uh, you know, SNP, they are they're working hard. Means you know, every time we have a query at any point of time, it's responded. So you know, that becomes a great support. And and Robert, you yourself have been a great support for last almost five to six years now. So it's always a pleasure. Thank you, Sandeep. So with, in providing this feedback, we hear this from a lot of companies that it creates this competitive spirit and, and people really look, where do we compare? What are our closest peers? Um, and the, the move to disclosing scores on question level, is that also something that you then share to this detailed level within the company? And was, was I, I assume that that gave you even more, more value um, in, in really understanding your gaps. Yes, absolutely. You know, now this time was a great advantage because we could go down into where, where did we score? You know, and, 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 you know, we were surprised that, you know, that some particular question we were almost where we had expected something like, you know, we are doing very good. All of a sudden we realized, oh God, what is it that we have done here? So now, you know, while we looked at it this year, today we are well prepared. Okay, what are the changes we have made? What is it that we have looked at? So at, at the grassroots level also, it is making a lot of impact. And then also is that, you know, a marketing team is also working on a lot of those things, you know, how do they really bring that focus uh, both in both uh, from the internal stakeholders as well as from the external stakeholders. And uh, another very important aspect, which Robert, I would want to highlight is today my customers, you know, they are looking at how sustainable you are. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow's future is the companies which are going to be more sustainable will have more business. Let's be very, let's be honest and very, very, very straightforward here. So if I'm making some improvements, I'm also bringing in a value to my business. And these are the aspects. And also, you know, customers are also looking at, you know, if you're doing this for yourself, what is it that you can help me? You know, whether it's supply chain, whether, you know, what are the kind of tools you're implementing? Is there any technology you're bringing in? There, there is a, there's a list of requests which come out from from the from the, from the partners saying that what is it that uh, well, that we can work together on? So these are the great things both internal, external, and from uh, um, SNP Global that we have been achieving. Excellent, um, Sandeep. One last follow-up question: Your company um, opted into the advanced data point sharing. Um, what were your motivations to do that? So, Robert, we wanted to be transparent right from the beginning. There was, there was means today as I'm speaking, I'm looking at how transparent I could be on some something where I, where other companies are not reporting. I'm, I'm struggling, you know, in terms of the data, but then I'm sure that you know those are the things which I will be able to put in public domain and also say that this is a place where we may or may not be doing well, but yes, there's a benchmark, and then here is it that I will be improving. And investors today, they are looking more from an aspect how transparent you are. Means every, every, every call I get into, they're asking is, okay, this you have disclosed. Uh, what is the next thing that you're looking at? So from the investor's perspective, from the customer's perspective, this is adding a lot of value to all of us. Means wherever, uh, I think so we, uh, we, in the starting of the call, we did mention about you know, investors asking, uh, you know, those questions. So when I went into one of such forums, they were there were discussions on you know how how best we are reporting and you know very frankly it is today if my TCFD means you know uh, I think so we have been the first ones where our integrated report 
is TCFD compliant, CDSB compliant, GRE compliant, SDGs, and this time we'll be also doing SASB. So, you know, these are the aspects which investors are looking at, and this helps overall in terms of, you know, the value that we really bring into the whole company asset and transparency. That really is the key aspect. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. Um, I saw one question from the audience coming in and we, we would have uh, one minute for each of you. Uh, let me read the question from Sri Muyi. Um, good to, to, to at least read you again, Sri. Um, we, so the question is a uh, quick question to the eminent panelists. How do you synthesize the impact of your ESG performance in your value chain? What are the absolute must haves that you seek in order to take them ahead in the journey with you? So what, how do you assess your, um, suppliers? What is the, the minimum that they need to do? Maybe starting with Dr. Shobi and then, then briefly, um, Sangeet Chana. So, so I think um, uh, for ESG, uh, the first important uh, point is that uh, we should adopt a structure approach towards sustainability. And, uh, and as I told in uh, my answer to your question, that a structured approach means you should be balanced on the uh, economic dimension, environment dimension, and social dimension. And unless until we will be balanced in approach on all these three, it is very difficult to get a good sustainability report and it, it's difficult to have a very good ESG rating. So uh, uh, we should must embed um, uh, governance uh, and economic dimension, environment dimension and social dimension. Okay, and that's also what you're looking for in your suppliers. So uh, for suppliers, uh, um, now we are driving one program, Sustainable Procurement. And uh, our aim is that uh, by 2025, our all the uh, input from the supplier should be from uh, sustainable sourcing. And uh, uh, we, we are doing a lot of work discussing uh, and aligning our suppliers, also evaluating our suppliers uh, and our aim is that uh, as much as possible, maximum we should get from the sustainable sourcing. But at least uh, our target is that by 2025, 60%, at least 60% sourcing will be from sustainable source. Hmm. Sandeep, for you, you have the last minute. What, yeah, what uh, is so your key focus with your suppliers? Yeah, thanks so much, Robert. And uh, Shimui, I think so I was missing you. Uh, I just uh, realized that you asked that question. So thanks for, uh, you know, just on the remuneratory part. So, uh, Robert, I think so very important aspect here is that uh, your suppliers, no matter what, they decide how how the governance impacts your overall, overall ESG scores or your overall performance. So from a governance perspective, uh, you know, the kind of uh, sustainable policies that you have, maybe it is, you know, um, the child labor or the harassments, or uh, these are the aspects where we are mostly focused on is other than, you know, while definitely we are also asking is that, you know, uh, where is your net zero story that becomes a regular part, but absolutely no, no is, uh, you know, compromising on, on the human, human aspects mm. that is from the social aspects, there's no compromise. Shimoi, that is that is one one aspect where we are very focused. You know whether it is uh, you know looking at uh, uh, corruption cases or X Y Z. So from that perspective, we are very very um, uh, straightforward. No, no, and we are very sensitive and focused on that. Thank you. So and and my my final word on that would be, as you well know, Shimoi, um, the CSA guides companies with very detailed questions on their supply chain and what type of uh, approach they should have to identify critical suppliers, supply chain risks. And uh, sometimes we're told we're asking difficult questions in this area is particularly, but also it's the right questions to ask. And uh, companies should have this information at their fingertips to understand their supply chain because nowadays um, news travels very fast and the moment something happens with one of your suppliers, it's, it's very fast that it is linked back to you and impacts your, your reputation and, and the, the, 
all the efforts that you built on in your own company can be tainted very quickly if you don't have the same um, standards applied to your suppliers. Um, so um, with that, I thank both of you very much. We are two minutes over time now, and I just want to make sure that all the attendees uh, are aware of tomorrow's panel. Um, it's very interesting, again, on the merging trends of, of ESG, a panel by Joe Phelan um, from World Business Council with very interesting speakers and then different presentations on climate risk disclosure from ERM and S&P Global and the tools that are available to you there. So I really hope to see all of you back again tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, everyone. And see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.